this reaction will stop. So before you could really study medical sciences, nature was working before that and it has done something here. Bicarbonate is constantly being produced within the RBCs. So its concentration in the RBCs is more and plasma fluid is less. So it will transfer through a special protein, right? This bicarbonate will transfer out of the RBCs. Monkeys have been left in, right? And apples have come out. What are these? Bicarbonate. But there is one problem. When constantly protons are being produced and retained in and constantly bicarb are pushed out, cell is retaining positive charges. So do you think it's good for electron neutrality of the cell? That is not good. Isn't it? Are you understanding me? So what really happens that because bicarb are coming out, protons are retained in, there is a risk that progressively this will become pathologically positively charged and plasma will become pathologically negatively charged. And nature doesn't want things like this in a healthy person. Actually this protein is exchanger. Whenever it throws one bicarb out, it takes one chloride in. This is called bicarbonate chloride exchange or shift, chloride shift. So actually in systemic capillaries, as RBCs are passing through systemic capillaries, what is coming out? Bicarb. And what is going into RBCs? Chloride. And there is no fun in telling when chloride will go and water will follow. I think you know it. Isn't it? So it means by the time RBCs move from arterial side to the uh, venous side, they are little swollen. That is one reason that as compared to arterial blood, venous blood is slightly more hematocrit. About 3% more hematocrit on the venous side. Am I clear? Because RBCs are more swollen. That is one of the reasons why hematocrit is more on the venous blood as compared to the arterial blood of the same person at the same time. Am I clear? Now, now you look at it. Okay, let's call proton the Mr. Monkeys and bicarbonate as Mrs. Monkey. You can see very bad, monkeys are sitting comfortably with the hemoglobin. hemoglobin and Mrs. Monkeys are coming out and blood is moving towards the lungs. So actually what is happening, monkeys are sitting in the RBCs and Mrs. Monkeys are running outside the RBCs. This is how the whole business goes to the lungs. Is that right? If someone asks you how the carbon dioxide is transported from the peripheral tissue to the lungs, the major way, 90% of the carbon dioxide is transported. You know, there, how many carbon dioxide was there? How much there? 4 ml. Out of this 4 ml, 90% of it is transported in the form of bicarbonate. But Bicarbonate are where? In the plasma. But where they were made? In the RBCs. So this is the role of RBCs. And this is the role of hemoglobin. Because that is buffering protons. Believe me, if hemoglobin does not buffer the proton, venous blood, pH will be really very acidic. Thank God it is little acidic. Is that right? You must be knowing pH uh, on arterial blood is normally how much? 7.2 7 dead, I mean uh, not dead but really acidosis, 7.40 and pH on venous side is 7.36, the real difference is 0 0.04 between arterial venous side normally, right? So there is a little uh, difference in uh, proton concentration, not big difference, thank God. 90% of the carbon dioxide is, today onward you have to remember, 90% of the carbon dioxide is transported from the peripheral tissue to the lungs in the form of bicarbonates. Am I clear? Okay. But actually some of it is 
about 5% of carbon dioxide, okay, 90% is going there. Now we can divide it. 90% mm, has gone in. Is that right? But 5% of it is in dissolved form. 5% of carbon dioxide can be kept into dissolved form under the pressure of 46 millimeter of mercury, partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So it means whatever carbon dioxide is being produced, whatever carbon dioxide is produced every minute, only 5% of that can be kept into solution form by partial pressure of 46 millimeter of mercury. How much is the 5%? 4 ml? 2 ml? 1 ml? That will be 25%, my friend. Your mathematics is like me. If you have 4 ml carbon dioxide, right, out of that, 90% is as bicarbonate. 90% bicarbonate means out of 4 ml, how much is the 90%? 2.6. Yeah. 3.91%, so, yeah, 3.6, right? 3.6 ml is going as bicarb. And about 0.2 ml, that is 5%. 5% is present as dissolved form. Is that right? And 5% of carbon dioxide in dissolved form, what is the 5% of? 4 ml. Anyone good in math? About, about approximately 0.2 ml. Right? And remaining 5%, even though books differ a little bit, but anyway, remaining 5% is present in special form or that is called carbamino, carbamino proteins. Especially carbamino hemoglobin. Now let me tell you what is meant by the carbamino hemoglobin. Okay, let me make a hemoglobin monomer. This is him and this is globin chain, right? Globin chain, of course, like all other, I make globin chain here, like all other peptides, it should have on one side amino, NH2, is that right? Am I right? Another end should be carboxyl, am I right? And in between there should be many, many, what? Amino acid. This is terminal amino acid on one side. This is amino group of terminal amino acid on other side. Clear? Right? Here, some of the monkey protons were held for buffering purpose. So these protons were produced by conversion of carbon dioxide into carbonic acid. And then when carbonic acid broke down, these protons were held here. But moreover, some carbon dioxide directly react with the amino groups. Some carbon dioxide directly react with the amino group. And this CO2, this is CO2 in a different way like this. And when any protein on amino end is having carbon dioxide in this form, reaction of carbon dioxide, this later on it will reverse in the lung. Is that right? In the tissues, when carbon dioxide is coming uh, within the RBCs, hemoglobin on the peptide chains on the amino end, carbon dioxide physically and chemically react with the amino group and convert into this form. Now this molecule is called carbamino hemoglobin. What is this called? Carbamino hemoglobin. Is that right? So about 5% of the carbon dioxide is transported as carbamino hemoglobin and very little carb, uh, carbon dioxide directly react with some of the plasma proteins amino group. You know there are plasma proteins, albumins, globulins, right? Fibrinogens. They do have their amino groups also. Some carbon dioxide react there as well and plasma protein also convert into carbamino.